Hello, BookTube. Well, it's the, this is the third shelf of the corner bookshelf. Uh, and as you can see from the crappy angle and the crappy lighting, we're now starting to pay a price for the fact that this bookcase is crammed in the corner. <laughs> uh, but I've fiddled around with the placement of the camera just a bit. And, and this, although I am blurred and in shadow, so you don't get your requisite uh, amount of sexiness for the day, I this angle shows the books just fine. So I, I thought we'd, we'd do this just for one shelf, and then I'll figure out some other way to do it. Uh, so the first, first we'll do the transverse books, the ones that are sort of piled on the sideways on the shelf. And the first one of those is one of these, these uh, little uh, Dutton hardcovers from 100 years ago. This is the, uh, the literary essays of uh, Badgett. Uh, and it's, uh, he's a, he was an old, uh, let me show you the the piece here. She, he was an old uh, Victorian man of letters, uh, and this is just a collection of of literary pieces that he did for money, uh, and they're very good. He's very good. <laughs> he's he's now totally forgotten, but he's very good. Same thing with this. This is uh, a book of essays by G. S. Street. Uh, let me see if I can show you the front of that as well. These things don't have dust jackets, so there's not much to show you. Uh, Good essays. Uh, this is these are also all all uh, literary or quasi artistic. Uh, the main reason that I have this volume is because his his uh, three essays on Lord Byron are very good. Uh, and then the last of the transverse bookcases uh, books here is the Oxford Book of Aphorisms, uh, chosen by the great the, the great humorist John Grost, uh, who just uh, uh, just picked all the best one-liners of literary history <laughs> and a thing like this comes in very handy uh, in my line of work which is why it's on this shelf uh, because you sometimes you just need that uh, a neat on point quote to kick things off and sometimes believe it or not i don't have them at my fingertips a lot of times i do uh but sometimes it's necessary to just uh let me see if i can pick one here for you uh yeah, here's a quote from George Eliot's Middlemarch. Uh, One must be poor to know the luxury of giving. Mm, that's neat, isn't it? Doesn't make any sense, but aphorisms never do. <laughs> but anyway, that's the last of the uh, transverse books. And now we'll do the, the shelf itself. And we'll start off with this big, uh, heavily illustrated edition of Richard Halliburton's Complete Book of Marvels. He is, that's, that's the author when he was a very young man. He uh, is the last of the great romantic travelers, the last uh, of the world traveling essayist who is not a tourist. Uh, right after his day, uh, the, the industry of travel caught up with the world, and now it's almost not possible to be a Richard Halliburton anymore. Uh, but in his day, look at these, these beautiful black and white photos just all throughout the thing. Uh, he did the complete book of Marvels, but he's done. He's done. Uh, you will find this split into many volumes, and you'll find many other volumes of his. In fact, I think there's a couple more in this room. I cannot recommend him strongly enough. If you see him in a used bookstore or an old yard sale or something, uh, don't be fooled by the musty smell. He is incredible to read. Uh, what are we going to do? Where are we going to put these things? Uh, the next thing is something we've seen on this channel before. This is this gorgeous edition of uh, The Grapes of Wrath. Uh, this is the 50th anniversary edition, and I saw it at the Brattle and just couldn't resist because it's it's just so beautiful. Uh, and then, and holy but a goodie that I just love rereading. It's <laughs> this is Brendan Gill's here at the New Yorker, his his seminal, a million times reprinted, best selling account of his years at the at the New Yorker magazine. Uh, you must take this with a whole cellar's worth of salt pinches. <laughs> uh, but even so, it is he he really knows how to tell a story. Someday, uh, I must do a whole video on Brendan Gill. <laughs> Pro and con. Uh, but for now, let's move on. Another thing we've seen on this channel before, These are this is a, one of those omnibus editions of uh, three novels of James M. Cain, who is great. This is The Postman Always Rings Twice, Double Indemnity, and Mildred Pierce. Uh, with a modernist of you know mural cover, uh, I can't recommend him strongly enough. Uh, if you read him, you will see immediately uh, all of the modern contemporary fiction writers who rip him off. <laughs> but you won't care because you'll have found the real thing. Uh, and then we have uh, Common Ground: A Naturalist Cape Cod by Robert Finch. Uh, this is. Robert Finch was a, a fantastic writer who wrote a series of books about Cape Cod. 
Uh, and this Common Ground is is one of the best ones that he did. Uh, you'll if you if you go to visit Cape Cod, you will there will always be a shelf of Robert Finch. <laughs> He's really good. Uh, and then we have this thing. This is uh, Black Lizard Press does these things. The big book of you might have seen their Pulp Fiction one. This is their big book of ghost stories. <laughs> these this is just what they are. These these big fantastic uh, collections of of along a theme, going back a hundred years, uh, and and most of them edited by a legendary editor named Otto Penzler, who is 200 years old, and still doing fantastic work. The eye he uses to pick stuff in his anthologies makes them priceless. This is a fantastic one, and I have a few others. He, you just can't go wrong with a mammoth book. Uh, uh, and then we have Broca's Brain by Carl Sagan. There's Carl Sagan. Uh, just one one of his biggest, I think, his meatiest uh, collection of science essays. Uh, I know I'm saying this with all these books, but you really can't go wrong with Carl Sagan. Uh, you should Google him. You should YouTube him. You should buy his books. Uh, we lost something really important when we lost him. Uh, and uh, the same thing would be true, I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm going to admit it, the same thing is also true of our next writer. Uh, this is Love, Poverty, and War by Christopher Hitchens. This is a great uh, paperback collection of his early essays. Uh, and this is God is Not Great, his, his memoir, uh, his, his screed against organized religion. Uh, not the only Hitchens in this room, by a long shot. Uh, especially his literary essays, I, I revisit. Uh, quite often, as we'll see, you'll see them in, in uh, later videos. Uh, but uh, always with increasing returns. <laughs> I find that I, he irritated the pee out of me when he was alive, and uh, and there were set twos. <laughs> but now that all that's over, I, I can acknowledge the same thing that most of his uh, former adversaries can acknowledge, which is that we lost something big when we lost him. We lost uh, a major uh, public intellectual voice. Uh, and there you have it. That is the uh, the third bookshelf of the the third bookshelf of the corner bookcase <laughs> with crappy lighting because it's a, it's kind of unavoidable when we're in a corner like this. And we'll move on to the next one next time, <laughs> and I'll make sure to leave notes down below. Thank you, Booktube.